I mean, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to open up a conversation that really pours in a authenticity into people um, that teaches them that yoga is so much more <laughs> than doing postures in pretty pants. <laughs> Absolutely. It is an expansive practice that has been around for millennia. And our expression through our physical form is one manifestation of the power and the essence of yoga. I'm so excited to be with you, Mia. Welcome everyone. I'm happy to see you all, be with you all. Thank you for joining. And I'm so excited to have this conversation. Let's, let's do this. All righty. So what I really wanted to bring and kind of connect into, um, like we were just talking about is there's a certain level of self-discipline it takes to get things done in a day. And then we just talked about fear. And so those are those hiccups where the outside world is pressuring us to, you know, keep up, speed up, do these components. And so I really wanted to begin to have a conversation now about how you live maybe from the inside out um, and, and really powerfully, fearlessly do some of the work you do. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a long journey to get here. <laughs> I will say that. And I am still learning and, and relearning and remembering um, to live from my source and my center of being in calm wellness, <sighs> love. Um, you know, I've had a number of dark nights of the soul where, um, where I've, I've come to a place in my, in my understanding of how I'm showing up for other people and myself that it's no longer sustainable. And uh, when I hear people talk about how do they get to these places where they can live fully as they are inside out. I always hear about like, you know, one, one moment, one experience that was just um, like spirit moving and shaking. And I have like four or five of them. So, <laughs> so and each time I have them, I become a more expansive um, expression of the light within. So it's like, it peels off another, um, not even layer, another sheath. Um, that needed to just literally be blown off through this experience because it just wasn't going to peel off nicely. It's just like I needed something beyond this world <laughs> to support me. And so the most recent of those, I've, I've had a number, the most recent was about well, the creative unearthing of who I am um, was about a year and a half ago. So I've always had this thread of, of writing, of sharing, of public speaking, and um, as a little girl, I used to win oratory contests for public speaking. Uh, people used to have me come up and go on stage and, and speak and share what I've been writing. And as I became an older adult, like in my early 20s, um, mid 20s, teenage years, I just got the world messages to, yeah, I got the world messages to shrink and be a little quieter, right? to shrink and you talk so much. Yeah, you use your hands too much. Your hair is a little crazy. And it's like, these are things that are of me. Like literally my hair grows out of my head this way. I can't, why would I control what I'm born with? It's immutable. I, it's like my skin, I cannot change it. Why are you shaming me for it? Um, so I, and then some of those messages came from people very close to me. And some of them I got um, from watching how others were valued for not looking or not showing up the way I just naturally was. And so I, I remember one of the people was here on this call, Tish Torres. I remember sitting with her. <laughs> we were in Arizona, in Sedona on a, like a 10 day retreat, meditation, yoga, a lot of silence, a good eating, ooh, good community. And I remember I declared, I am not too much. I am not too effing loud. <laughs> I am creative. I am a creative being. And from that moment, and I kept saying it, I mean, she's, and she's always been, so it's really good to have community to hold, not to hold you accountable, just like to hold you through it um, and be with you through it. And I just, I just went on and I, I created um, the 500,000 word essay. I just love saying that because that's a really long essay and, and thousands of people read it and shared it. And now it's similarly one of the pieces that is used in yoga teacher trainings. And I get called in uh, with love or, or brought in, not called in, brought in to um, expand upon that writing and expand upon what I share in the stories and to be part of teacher training curricula, which is going to be so, so influential as we 
continue to grow um, this, this, this yoga expression and movement in the West because we gotta be more cognizant and be more inclusive. Not 500,000, 5,000. Um, I mean, that, that's like, that's like an anthology book, Linda, which I will get there. I'm going to claim that because you just shared it in the universe. <laughs> and then I went on to um, write, and so it is, two audio documentaries, one called Ahimsa, um, the audio memoir on yoga, wellness, and Black lives in 2020. And that poured out of me out of pain. And I wrote it in the deep, deep, deep depths of June 2020. And I, I had to get it out. And I wrote Higher Purpose about an organization that works with people who've been incarcerated to get livable wage jobs because the, the source of dignity and power and strength that needs, needs to be within every waking moment of our lives, whether or not we have been uh, incarcerated or not. And that's really important. I choose audio documentary because I like the way people sound when you hear their story and their words. Nobody can speak for somebody else the way someone can say their story for themselves. And you just kind of don't get that if you look at the words on paper. So I love audio for the rich texture and all that um, <laughs> anthologies coming soon. Yes, Tish. Um, and all that, Mia, we can share with folks if they're interested. Yes. Oh my gosh. So that's what's really amazing is digital has brought people in a completely new like format. Like, I mean, all of us have a version of Zoom fatigue, so we're gonna get through today. <laughs> and, sure. but, but hearing voices, like even the, the life you speak into this room um, is so dynamic. And I think that when we practice yoga and have silence, um, it's interesting that you, you almost reflect on how, how you're being in your conversation the next day or in that next moment. And so I think it's really powerful um, to, to kind of open up that yoga is more than asana. Uh, and for people that maybe don't know what the word ahimsa means, maybe you can expand on that and then we'll talk about the truth I know about yoga too. <laughs> Absolutely. So ahimsa is um, one of the yamas, one of the ways of being with, with ourselves and each other. Yamas and niyamas, part of the eight limb path of yoga, um, which means union yoga, coming together. Ahimsa means not harm. So how are we practicing not harm? And it's not a passive practice. It's very much so an active way of being. I say often, I'm aggressive about my peace because <laughs> I didn't get it without really, not even asking for it, creating it. I had to create it. Um, and I've, I've learned that through many of those dark nights. And, and so Ahimsa means not harm, which we can practice in all aspects of our life. And it felt particularly central given all the harm that was being televised um, around murder and killing. And, and I was like, this isn't, this isn't okay, this isn't normal. And we gotta call ourselves back in because we're, we're, we're watching brutality and dehumanization. And it's, it's a, a news story. Like a, a spirit just, just left a, 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 a physical being and we're watching it as breaking news. This is not okay. And um, how do we honor and revere the life that, that just transitioned and, and passed um, and knowing that there's so many other lives that, that, that are living this daily experience in this society that we've created, specifically this is the context within the US, but also it happens globally. Uh, we gotta get back to, to the to the reverence of being in life so that that's what we're watching and what a lot of people are experiencing is not considered, huh, unfortunately happened again. Like this is not normal. We can't normalize it. Um, so I, I wrote a himsa, meaning not harm to, to invoke more of that in our being, especially within those who were called and brought in to listen to hear it. Yeah, thanks for that context. Um, in the coaching that I serve folks with, we do yamas and niyamas. And it's great because you're able to keep it um, simple as much as <laughs> yoga philosophy can go into a lot of different depths. And, you know, as a faithful woman, you know, you can take those contexts too. But I think it really created a place to meet people where they were at and just look at, you know, how are you practicing generosity? How are you practicing kindness? How are you practicing cleanliness and purity? Um, and what are those versions of it for you? And how can I hold the space 
for you to explore that and maybe feel like about it. Um, and I love how you you talked about desens uh, like or that we've become desensitized to some of the things um, you know that mainstream media has just consistently put in front of us. And um, I just to personally open up for a second, like I'm super sensitive. <laughs> like I am like empath on loud. <laughs> and I think it's great because that's from my practice. Like I, I've gotten myself there. I'm not shutting myself down anymore, suppressing anymore. Um, and so I'm very cognizant about some of those things and details that I put in front of me. Um, tell me about your yoga practice. Tell us, kind of give us some context. How does it fit into your world? This whole, you know, afternoon is about really aligning with how to prioritize personal life. Um, for me, yoga is a little bit of my business life too, but at the end of the day, my heart's still in it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's so integrated. I'm okay. My yoga mat's behind me. It's a, are you there? Okay. So is everything that I do It's a whole room. Okay. It's, it's, <laughs> it's integrated into my being, into my daily practice, into my life and, and the physical practice. Yes. Also every morning I meditate and I meditate for as long as it takes for my heart to feel calm because a lot of mornings and I've always been like this uh, and I'll, I'll share more about it. <clears throat> my heart kind of races a bit. And I know it's because I, I have this energy within me. I've always had it that if I don't move it, if I don't transmute it, like express it out, uh, then it, then it stays and it, it just, gnaws and curdles and turns into sometimes anxiety or a lot of the times. And so my morning routine has become so that it supports the flow of that energy from the source. And so I meditate and I, I use, um, sometimes I focus on my breathing. Sometimes I focus on my heart beat, like the rhythm of it, listening to it. And sometimes I use affirmations or mantras. Um, and those are super, super personal. And I work with a number of teachers and have, and then have sought out development and training so I could work with a number of people so they could find their own uh, personal mantra that, that works um, and breathes life with them. And so I, I do that every morning. And, and this morning, Mia, it was it took me an hour and that's okay. Cause I woke up extra early. Cause I figured it, cause I know I was going to be with you all. And so when I know that I'm going to be with more people, my energy amps up and I know it cause I've been with myself for so long <laughs> or noticed my patterns for so long. I woke up a lot earlier and, uh, and then I took a shower and I rinsed with cold water. I, I sometimes I have to do, come on, Jennifer. Yes. Sometimes I do a cold water rinse and I got to do it because there's so much heat there's so much fire. There's so much power. I'm not trying to douse it. I just want to, man, I just want to transmute it a little bit so that we can, we can come out of the shower <laughs> feeling refreshed and still not literally on fire blazing, you know, a little warmth. You all, you all feel it, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not scorching. Okay. <laughs> so it's a lot of it, uh, talking about to the niyamas, niyamas, a lot of it is energy management, brahmacharya, right? A lot of it, um, is energy management. And, uh, and that's, those are some of my just so close to me, held close to me, ritualized practices. Yeah. I found that it's a common ground too. Like most people in the Western world and regardless, right? Like I've done so much traveling, gone like most of 2014 kind of thing. Um, and when you, you can feel people when you you know step off the plane <laughs> even you you can feel that energy is different and there's this responsibility um and what i teach is that like we have this this space right so you're you and you're self expressing and and you get this moment of choice where you know you create the shield around you or you're really looking at like you know how can i be in contentment while facing fears how can i be you know, in a version of surrender that allows more space with other people. I find that a lot with, um, you know, especially like my type A, like go-getters. 
Yeah, I totally, I totally am that too. I, like I, that's who I call in. So this, this whole room, like I know we could go on a workout and write papers and do all that, but that's not what today's about. <laughs> um, you know, but what I find is it's satisfaction. And for me to not be so controlling in my personal life, like around food or around, like I have to take the power yoga class at 7.45, Monday through Thursday, like, and if I'm not there, I'm not good enough. Like you unravel all of those moments. Um, and so find your version of it, you know, find how it can really evolve and shift. Um, because when bigger media components or current events that we are so responsible for taking a stand for and building an opinion about to then go perpetuate goodness, um, it's going to take all of you and the more powered up you can be, right. The less like wish washy, like we're on that stable ground. And I think that's what the yamas and niyamas have done for me. So yamas are external niyamas are internal, right? <laughs> for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the chat. Um, Paola. Yeah. Thank you. I knew somebody else had to get this. And that's, I like this word. So uh, simmering, how to, <laughs> simmering in, instead of scorching. Um, yeah, Mia, I, I totally agree with you. And I'm, I love that how we, I don't know if you all notice, we are just like weaving in yogic philosophy and, and, it, and it doesn't feel like, I don't know, academic and like non, uh, like, connective it, it feels very and th so that's that's another noticing that um, the more and more I practice the more I see within my integrated um, selves being with people that uh, whatever uh, needs to come through comes through through all of my years of, of study and practice and experience that I, I continue to journey with I, I love it I, I feel so so nourished already and I'm, I'm excited to still be at this table thank you you're so welcome. And I want to have you pour into the audience because we're um, creatives in here as well. And I know that you do some of that, like not only in your own projects, but then like for others and things. So creativity is something that definitely has to be harnessed. Um, I just finished my master's degree and so I was like burnt out writing too. So I get it. Congratulations. Um, and now, thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of, a lot of typing. Um, and yeah. so, you know, how, how can we reinvigorate creativity? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, let go of the pressure that it has to be something. Let go of the pressure that it has to be something. The form takes the shape of the expression. So sometimes there might not even be a form that exists out there to encapsulate what you are creating. That doesn't mean you change what you're creating. That means you transform how it is expressed. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Like if I had, huh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Savage. Cause if I, I mean, my, one of my early, early writing, um, guides was like, I don't care about form. And I was like, wait, what you are an award-winning uh, author. And she was like, I don't care. What is form S somebody else's expression of what they created. So it matched them. Why am I going to look match? Like want to be like them match them. I can't. So I was like, okay. And then I just proceeded to create something that like had never been formed before in all her years in, in a writing workshop. And she was like, great, good. Now keep going. And I was like, okay. okay. <laughs> so I share that with you all. Don't be wedded. To I don't know if I fully even see it yet. Like, cause I'm so formed, like, you know, like you want to just, and I probably would, I would probably like go and write the blog post and it would like, feel like how I wrote for school right and it's like there's there is there is no form like I don't know maybe it's just me or if I mean, if the people feel that way it's like what, what do you mean there's oh. no structure oh yeah oh yeah. like what do you mean there's not a list right. to cross off and how did what does that feel like what's brimming to the surface when your unconscious mind is like wait a minute I've been working through form and I don't have to yeah do you meditate absolutely okay uh, <laughs> that's how you get yourself there I'm like okay so how do we get ourselves there oh oh yeah. how do I not remember that it's going to take so much like the, that will take time right I think that's the instant scarcity I drop into is well to create no form would take more time than me doing form and so I'll talk myself out of it and 
Oh, because see that that is who's talking when you're saying these things. There you go. <sighs> yeah. Boom. And that's why you sit. And and you let whatever comes up comes up. No judgment. Okay. Ah, oh, that's ego speaking. All right, cool. <laughs> a little bit longer. Source will come up. <laughs> Spirit. That's fine. Because it, it's all and listen, ego isn't bad. It is, it is there. Um his agenda is also to protect us. So, so knowing that there might be parts of you like, oh no, don't do that because I want to keep you safe. And the other parts like, I want to grow, I want to expand. Let listen to everything. You are all forms of you. Like there's no disintegration. Integrate, integrate, listen, listen. And then you hear the way forward. Like you know, because when you you know, it's just you're fighting against that voice that's saying, hey, this is what you got to do. Um, and it's just can be scary at times. And, and that's where community comes in. And, th and that's where, me. I'm glad you mentioned that I work with other people. That's where a lot of folks have sought um, me out. And I, I, I didn't know, I didn't expect this, but it sought me out to support them as a guide, whether it's create, creatively um, <clears throat> or, through, or through their physical expression of yoga. Um, because sometimes it's just, you know, when we haven't sat long enough with ourselves to cultivate the inner resilience and strength, the steadfastness, the discipline, it's easy to go with the other parts of us that just want to keep us littler, not because they don't like us, but because they want to keep us safe. Yeah. And having that relationship with safety, I think, um, is something still evolving in my soul, I'll be honest. Um, and it, it also you, you'll, on the other side of finishing the creative project, you'll notice how you imprint on it differently. There's, oh, there's a completely story. different version of you in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Whew. yeah. So um, I wanted to share your amazing, generous offer with this community um, so that the Wealthed Warriors can get more connected, can understand and feel empowered with everything that you're up to and, and even just follow along as well. You wanna share a little bit about your, your offering? I do, I do, I do. Okay, loves, <clears throat> I work with organizations, mostly in education, wellness and um, advocacy, cause that's a lot of my background, which we didn't even talk about, but it doesn't matter cause it's, it's stuff that I had done, but that's not necessarily my essence of who I am. So when there's plenty of time to find that out. Um, so. That's great because I get to work with people who are connected to those organizations. And I want to create a space to connect with people who aren't connected through those organizations to work with me. So for the first time, I'm actually opening up my coaching through creativity, leadership, development sessions for individuals. And I'm calling it Unblock Your Writer's Block. I've never offered this for individuals. I've only today have been working through organizations. Now, because this whole time we've been talking has been focused on creativity, I'm opening that up. However, you heard me say it. There is no form that we should be limited by. So if you're like, Yasmin, I want to I wanna work with you. I, I want to go deeper into my expression of myself through writing, through speaking, through yoga, through whatever, through leadership, I, then that's fine. We'll do that. Okay. Don't be dissuaded by, by the form that it is taking now. So I'm opening up for the first time, individual coaching, professional development sessions right now are focused on creativity. However, they could take another form if you are so moved. I only have been working with organizations in education, wellness, and advocacy, and their, their employees, their leaders, their staff. I realize that that is super limiting. It's great for them, but it's not great for people who aren't connected to those organizations that are working with me. So I'm opening up for the first time to work with you if you so choose. And the link is there. It goes straight to my Calendly. Like, we're not going to waste time because time, 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 is, time is what is time. Like, the only time we have is now. So... I'm not going to send you through some other list and questionnaire. Mm -mm. You're ready. Boom. Let's get on the calendar. Let's sync up literally our timelines and let's start creating and getting to work and getting you unblocked. Yay. I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Yasmin. And like, 
I think next session is mostly culture and advocacy. So we might be circling back. I think we've talked about that too. Yeah. So thank you so much for being on the show.